posted this in the uh, private Facebook group, and then I sent some of you all the same text message. Um, but I wanted to talk about dieting and the history of dieting. So uh, first, before we get started, I wanted to introduce Dr. Andrea Carter Best. Uh, she is a medical doctor. She is a uh, psychiatrist, and then she's a holistic nutritionist, right? And so one of the things that I truly believe is that your food really is your medicine, especially now, you know, what we're going through, uh, food really is the medicine, right? And so I love that she has all of it too, you know, in terms of like nutrition and the science of it. She has a, the science of it, and then as well as the the psychiatry piece, because I feel like that is generally how oftentimes we uh, kind of don't understand how we emotionally eat and where that comes from historically in terms of, uh, you know, being enslaved people in, in that, where that comes, where that falls into play. So, hey, Myrtle. Uh, so let's talk about Myrtle, if you can mute your uh, phone for me. Uh, I wanted to uh, introduce Dr. Andrea Best, and then I want to talk about dieting, because I know we started a 30-day challenge, and I specifically said that this is how I want you to fuel your body instead of a diet, right? It wasn't a diet, it was really about fu fuel, right? So Dr. Andrea, can you talk to us about, do diets work, and you know, what does that actually look like? So I wanted you to, you take the floor. So, well, fortunately or unfortunately, I've had uh, experiences to show me that diets don't work, um, in addition to the training and the science that um, supports the same. Mm -hmm. However, um, having an adjustment in your mindset, an adjustment in lifestyle, and mm -hmm. um, an adjustment in some key things that affect the gut, uh, I think are important in terms of metabolism, weight management, addressing that that visceral fat that we'll, we'll talk, talk about, as well as mood and hormone hormone management. So, mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things that I was really curious about because I'm a huge fan of Jack Lalane. Like he kind of started this whole movement of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know exercising and eating more fruits and vegetables. He didn't call it a diet. He just really right. wanted to talk about kind of like the lifestyle. So I did a little bit of research on like where that comes from in our history. And the world's first diet book was written in 1500. <laughs> and it became uh, like a sexier, looser. Uh, in 1550, John Hill advised people to eat simply because more die of gluttony than the sword of the plague. Um, so I really kind of wanted to, it's hard to say like there's so, it's a billion dollar industry, right? The diet, the supplements. And if you look at kind of just some of the things that I've noticed, right? And I think because I am like, I like to go behind the, the popular things and kind of do my own research, right? So, yes. um, and your research, uh, Dr. Dr. Best, what do you find most common when people come to see you for nutrition, right? What do you find people most commonly struggle with, you know, in terms of dieting? What well, are some of the common the, things? By the time people get to me, they're struggling with a combination of things mm -hmm. because most people are, you know, for whatever reason, are resistant to seeing a psychiatrist. Most people are resistant in the beginning to going in to see a nutritionist. Many people are resistant to going in and discussing a lot of these things with their doctors in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times uh, physicians don't have a lot of time to even talk about nutrition yeah. when it should be one of the first things discussed when you go in to the office about for any symptom. Mm -hmm. So by the time people get to me, it's a whole sort of perfect storm or imperfect storm, if you will, of things, um, it's usually something hormones are involved, mm -hmm. um, some chemical imbalance of, of something, and not just mine, but um, usually there's a gut symptom, mm -hmm. there's a sleep symptom, um, anxiety or, or depression, mm -hmm. um, fatigue, low libido. So it's usually a combination of those things. Mm -hmm. And um, 
And even though each person gets like their own individualized plan, because we're not all the same, yeah. a lot of the same recommendations though are given to address the things, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I love that you said that, Dr. Bess, because I feel like in terms of dieting and exercise, right? Like just as individual as your fingerprint is, so is what your body actually needs. So in terms of what you put in it, and not even just what you put in it, but what you put on it, you know, from the things that we put on our hair, because let's talk about what is the most porous thing, right? The most porous thing, uh, the most, lar the, our largest organ is what, Dr. Bess? Yeah, our skin is like our, our largest organ. So in terms of how you hydrate, uh, in terms of what you put on your body, and definitely what you put in your body, right? So uh, I think commonly uh, when you look at like visceral fat, so can you tell everybody what is visceral fat and what does it look like in the pancreas? What does visceral fat look like in the liver? And then what are some of the common things that happen when you have visceral fat, you know, excluding the diet, right? Because I wanted to really address diet because I think commonly, even in taking the class and even in doing like the challenge, right? I didn't call it a diet. I wanted it to really be like, these are things that you should use to fuel your body, right? So right. let's talk about visceral fat and what are the dangers of having visceral fat? Um, right before that, I'll, I'll say, you didn't call it a diet. Mm -hmm. And you also address mindset. Mm -hmm. So I always start with mindset. I always mm -hmm. start with what we're thinking, what you're thinking about your body, what you're mm -hmm. thinking about your symptoms, what you're mm -hmm. thinking about the fuel, because it's not what we put in our mouth that defiles us. Mm -hmm. okay? If you know the scripture, if you know that, it is, it is our thoughts about things, mm -hmm. okay? So energy, um, food has energy. Our thoughts are energy. Mm -hmm. So you can have um, a number of nutritious things that you do put in your body, but because of your thinking, your absorption of the nutrients from that can be impacted. Mm -hmm. So it's not just eating the healthiest um, things, and we can certainly talk about specifics, but can your body absorb it? So there's other factors as well. Mm -hmm. In terms of visceral fat, Visceral fat, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, that's abdominal fat or belly fat. Mm -hmm. And that's actually not the most accurate way to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, because the fat that I see on my arms or my legs or my belly, that's subcutaneous fat. That's the fat right under the skin. Mm -hmm. Visceral fat is that deeper fat that's there around you know, right around your liver, your stomach, your intestines, your pancreas. Mm -hmm. And that's why it impacts your health so much. So it's there around the, the liver, your liver enzymes are impacted. It's around the pancreas. So it impacts your insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. um, your, it impacts absorption, mm -hmm. um, small intestine, large intestine functioning and health. So that type of fat is what causes the stomach to protrude, mm -hmm. which is why the recommendation is to make sure that your belly, you know, or your waistline, excuse me, for women is 35 and less. For men, 40 inches mm -hmm. or less, okay? Mm -hmm. So if it's greater than that, if you measure that, then you're at, what the research says is that you're at greater risk for um, cardiovascular issues, hypertension, diabetes, um, even Alzheimer's and, and some other conditions. But what I go back to again is mindset. Mm -hmm. And when people come to my office, I say, I see you well, mm -hmm. even if there are symptoms, even if the labs say this, 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 mm -hmm. I still see you well. Mm -hmm. So we're aligning that we are well and we're not coming from a space of sickness, mm -hmm. but we're coming from a place of wellness. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the language around things, the language is powerful like diet sounds bad who wants that you know <laughs> you know all of this stuff but if you talk about healthy lifestyle and vigor mm -hmm. and um and energy and vitality yeah. and clear thinking and mm -hmm. processing and creativity and yeah. and creating you know your purpose on the planet mm -hmm. and good sex and, yeah. and you know, squeaky joints you know when you talk yeah. like 
that feels better. Yeah. So it takes you to a different energetic place. Mm -hmm. So even with the symptoms, even with the 35, 36, or even if you do a BMI and it puts you in an overweight or obese place, I'm still, I still don't see you that way. And I don't want you to see yourself that way. So whatever we're creating, that right there, that is what's pulling us. Mm -hmm. We're being pulled to that. Understand? Mm -hmm. So those measurements we use, even BMI is not exact. And that visceral, the visceral fat, the only way to really, really know what that is is to do an MRI CT. And we can't do that on every single person. So if you can just think, whatever your total fat is, about 10% of that is your visceral fat, but that is enough to cause you to be slowed down, sluggish, mm -hmm. to not um, digest and to absorb things very well. Mm -hmm. um, that's enough to impact your, your creativity, your processing, your calculations, mm -hmm. your memory. That's enough to impact your ability to orgasm. It's enough to impact your ability to problem solve. All of these things. Mm -hmm. So there are many other reasons to, to address it without saying, okay, you're going to get, you're going to have a, if you don't do this, you know, because that doesn't really motivate people or pull people right. when you try to do it in, out of fear. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I mentioned in the 30 day challenge, I, I specifically wanted us to think about like fueling our bodies, right? Because I felt like that was super important in terms of not the dieting aspect and not even just the exercise. Cause I know oftentimes when people start doing something different, the expectation is that I'm immediately gonna see changes, right? And right. one of the reasons why I love for Chris Bill to be on is, you know, in her in her head she's like i'm gonna lose this weight in a year right like she's like i have this goal and i want to do it in a year but if you followed chris's journey and i know chris from you know we go way back literally she's taken four years to go on this journey but a lot of that journey she had to go on by herself of discovering like she mentioned visceral fat you know and i was like yes you are right chris but she started being curious about the way her body was feeling and the mm -hmm. way that it functioned that she literally was like how do i do this and how do i do it long term and not the short term dieting thing that we all you know have been kind of bought we bought into it you know because that's a billion dollar industry right right so I think it's interesting with you, Dr. Best, because you went into medicine first, right? And then I know, you know, just having worked in pharmaceutical cells and diabetes and cardiovascular disease and pulmonary embolism disease, that generally as a medical doctor, you get a very short window of what actually is nutrition and what's good for you, right? So the fact that you took that journey as well, can you speak to holistic nutrition? And I do, do know too, like, our food has changed. Like I would have clients say to me, hey, well, Madison, my great grandfather used to drink coffee every day and he smoked cigarettes and he did, you know, this, but the coffee and the, you know, the things that he ate or if he ate bacon or if he ate pork, it was completely different than what we're consuming now. And even I think there's so many like vegan influencers, even though I talk about, you know, eating more plant and uh, plant nut based, you know, literally the soil, the soil has been depleted. So if you talk about, you know, fueling your body in that way, there are some things that you need to supplement. So can you speak to right. kind of how food has changed and what led you into going into holistic nutrition? Sure. So I actually started in nutrition. Okay. So in college, my, um, my majors, I double majored in chemistry and nutrition. So nutrition was basically, it was called food science then and, you know, modern day biochem, mm -hmm. but basically learning the chemical compounds of food. It was after I began medical school that I began the holistic training as well mm -hmm. and began learning about um, Eastern medicine and how um, Chinese medicine will look at the energy in food 
and the balance. So the yin and yang. So certain foods are considered cold and some are considered warm mm -hmm. um, versus chemical compounds. Mm -hmm. So I've always been fascinated by the chemistry of it and then learning the energy and vibrational level of things and how to come how to combine complex carbs and a lean protein mm -hmm. versus um, which glycemic um, index foods to combine with things in the morning versus the afternoon yeah. the hormones certain times of the day based on the sun um, our hormones certain times of the of the month based on the moon mm -hmm. all of those things mm -hmm. um, pretty fascinating mm -hmm. um, you're right that's not really a part of or at the time wasn't really a part of the medical school training but more and more, it, it is when I came out of um, psychiatry residency, there was no integrative medicine training. So you, I just had to go and do it on my own and then put it all together. Yeah. But there are programs that have it now. And it's important because the food is so different. So now we have food, we have preservatives and mycotoxins and um, aflatoxins and the peanut butter, the glycosylate on corn. We have food substances. The gut doesn't even recognize a lot of the stuff as food. Mm -hmm. So when you have, um, for instance, um, high fructose corn syrup. Mm -hmm. So my uncle and aunt, they, they were eating bacon and brown sugar and all kinds <laughs> right. of things, but they were not eating um, high fructose corn syrup or hydrogenated fats. My uncle was eating bacon, but he was also eating walnuts, you know, mm -hmm. you know, from the trees. He was also eating seafood that he fresh caught. Mm -hmm. uh, we were eating from our gardens. You know, my parents had a garden. So we were taking uh, fruit and, and veggies and um, fish and, and, and sharing it amongst family members. So mm -hmm. they could eat that way. Yeah. Um, but now the grains have, um, sprays and about 25 percent of the crops still have um, mold and, and and yeast and other and fungus those types of toxins on them so even if you do a plant-based diet yeah. and think that you're eating healthy it's important to know the source of the the food that you're receiving because your gut does not recognize it and the gut doesn't recognize a certain substance as food then one it's not gonna absorb it well. It's going to impact the lining of the gut mm -hmm. and, and then hence the leaky gut syndrome. Mm -hmm. Or it's going to pass out of your body undigested and cause the constipation, bloating, diarrhea, and those types of things. Mm -hmm. So um, for many clients, we'll talk about digestive enzymes like lipase, amylase, and bromelain, mm -hmm. which can help to break down some of these these things mm -hmm. but if you can figure out the source of your food first yeah and make sure and to try to avoid the preservatives the artificial flavors the enriched flour anything enriched yeah. you know yeah. the white flour white yeah. sugar those types of things mm -hmm. then then you're going to have um, healthier gut health yeah which is going to improve your immune system you're going to have the appropriate percentage of the good bacteria to the bad bacteria mm -hmm. but if not then sometimes we'll do probiotics mm -hmm. to help with that mm -hmm. um, other things can help with the lining mm -hmm. of the gut as well um, mct oil green tea extract and a number of different things but if you can start with preventing it that's that's always the best mm -hmm. start with real food real food first right yeah. Uh, so later on, we're going to talk about uh, supplements and trace minerals. Uh, but now uh, it's funny because Lynette asked the question in terms of women um, at, that are going through menopause, like your the things that your body needs, you know, after that. And I started doing research in terms of fertility for myself. Like, you know, what are some of the things that uh, could potentially prevent me from having a healthy pregnancy, you know, in terms of like caffeine and dandelion greens and things that oh, I right. can actually start fueling my body more. So one of the well, questions, uh, kind of banking on what in terms of menopause for women, but also for men, because in your 20s, 30s, 40s, and, you know, 50s plus, right, your body changes and it starts to be uh, depleted of certain things. So can you speak to 
as you age, some of the things that your body may be depleted of and things that you could actually start eating more of before we even talk about supplements. Uh, because if we even talk about like hydration, right? Like drinking right. water, how important is it for your body to, you know, to actually consume, A lot. <laughs> right? <laughs> to drink water in terms of, you know, if yeah, the largest portion of your, your, the largest organ is your skin, right? Uh, so right. you've been taking showers. So can you speak to what your body may need? Uh, let's go 30 plus, right? Because I feel like nobody's in their 20s here. Uh, Kanitra might be in her 20s. I'm not sure. I can't tell by your picture. But if you could speak to what your body actually needs in terms of, number one, dealing with menopause, and then, you know, after 50s plus, like what does your body actually need from so, the food? So regardless of age the first thing is considerable hydration um so i start the morning as soon as i get up mm -hmm. i have i have a glass of water mm -hmm. um at my bedside mm -hmm. as soon as i get up mm -hmm. i'm hydrating but i also can feel my body knows you know because i know my body now i listen to it i pay yep. attention to it yep. i know well before i get to that dehydrated state but if you start the day with water and you're drinking and hydrating over the course of the day, mm -hmm. then your cells are, are programmed to, to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's understanding we were born, <laughs> you know, talk about this all the time, we're born worthy, born valuable, born programmed. Yep. At six months, the baby didn't have to, you know, go and read instructions on how to crawl. Right. <laughs> right. At a year, the baby didn't have to go read instructions on how to walk. Yep. So that's programmed in. Yep. And so even with menopause, it's a lot of times it's removing faulty habits. Yep. So if in our if in your twenties you can learn how to hydrate well, mm -hmm. how to how to do thirty minutes of exercise mm -hmm. each day of cardio mm -hmm. or you know three times a week or strength training at least twice a week, mm -hmm. then when you're older, those habits are already set. Yep. Because you know you don't have to worry so much that you're losing lean muscle, but because yep. you because you've established patterns already. Yep. Okay. So the amounts of things may be less. You still need lots of water. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need as many calories. Mm -hmm. But if early on the habit is to binge eat large amounts of food, it's going to be more of an issue when you're older and your metabolism is slower. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in terms of estrogen and, and testosterone and growth hormone, those types of things, mm -hmm. most people don't need extra growth hormone. Most mm -hmm. people don't need to, um, to supplement testosterone. Mm -hmm. There are some men who may need it early on because of certain medications or certain right. types of um, syndromes, mm -hmm. and same for women. Mm -hmm. But there are many different teas and different things that you can use mm -hmm. to help. But if you can hydrate well, exercise, lower your stress level, right. lower, your, lower your cortisol, yeah. If you can lower your cortisol and your stress, mm -hmm. you decrease visceral fat. Yeah. And deep visceral fat. fat. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. The, the deep fat that's around your, your organs. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you lower cortisol, you, you impact that. Mm -hmm. So you improve your hormone balance. You improve mm -hmm. your weight. You decrease mm -hmm. the risk of your of health issues, you increase your HDL, you lower your LDL, mm -hmm. you lower your C-reactive protein, all of those things improve just from handling, managing stress. So if you can learn how to manage stress, either through mindfulness, meditation, prayer, exercise, um, eating lots of green leafy vegetables, yep. um, on your, having protein at every meal, doing five small meals a day mm -hmm. where you have protein in each of those, and, um, and again, if your plate is about, you know, I usually say three quarters colorful or half yes. vegetables, yes. then that's the type of diet that is just going to allow your cells to do what they're already programmed to do. Yeah. So our cell, our fat cells are already pro are already programmed mm -hmm. to be eliminated. Yeah. So we didn't have to do extra stuff to increase what's called a pop, um, programmed cell death or a apoptosis. But 
if you know habits back here are such that you you have to do it now mm-hmm. then certain things like green tea extract in the morning in a in a plant-based smoothie mm-hmm. um a tablespoon of or teaspoon of mct oil depending on your triglyc- triglycerides in mm-hmm. in that green tea smoothie mm-hmm. um, blueberries in it that have a lower glycemic index in yeah. that plant-based green tea smoothie mm-hmm. um, flaxseed chia in that green <laughs> plant-based green tea smoothie mm-hmm. you understand yeah. those types of things and then you know lunch time a salad if you're not um, i eat um, fish so and um, and certain times of the year Mm-hmm. Um, I will also eat a bit more poultry. Mm-hmm. And this is because I know my body. Yeah. And my body has been trying to get through menopause. Right, right, right. Right. For some time, <laughs> yes. for yeah. some time I would like for it to just say, okay, we're done. But right. Right. about six months, I'm like, woohoo. And then it's like, I'm, you know, it's like a period comes back. I'm like, what is going on? But anyway, <laughs> so. I know my body, I know I need when I am, when I need more volume, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. lean protein. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, um, I might do just like two, four ounces of a lean um, protein, like chicken or fish, that's about half the size of my palm. Yeah. Or a cup of, um, cup of beans. If you have tofu, it's like a third of that block. Yeah. that type of protein like 15 yeah. to 20 grams that right there is what can help with with maintaining the lean muscle along with that cardio and strength training over the the week the yeah. water over the day the yeah. green leafy vegetables the five small meals the yeah. sleep and cutting out stuff that stresses you out hmm. or people um, <laughs> <laughs> um. that's but sometimes we don't you, we don't have that much control. That's true. Um, That's so true. Because if if you have young children, if you have a baby, you know yeah. those types of things. It's like yeah. uh, you can't you um, can't get rid of them, but you can manage your stress and how you how you handle it. So you said two things that I want to uh, touch on: um, low glycemic index fruit. Because a lot of people think, especially when you're trying to lose weight or drop pounds, that sugar is the enemy so but you can still what is your opinion on having fruit right i definitely am a firm believer in the low glycemic index fruit like blueberries because they have antioxidants strawberries all the berries tend to have lower glycemic index uh low so what is your take on adding fruit to your diet to your diet and i always say try to have greens with everything right so having a green salad. And then what you put on your salad is just as important too. Cause if you're blowing right. the salad up with ranch dressing and cheese, uh, and then, you know, the, the dressings that you're not making yourself, then that's got chemicals. It's got stuff in it that, you know, is processed again. And so the one of the things that I love to talk about is if it's processed, that means your body isn't doing the work. So if right. it's already pre-processed, then that means your body isn't, it's not working and it's not breaking it down. So what's your opinion on like- It's either going to be energy or it's going to be fat. Yep. Okay. So when you eat that processed stuff or the high, um, high, high fat, high mm-hmm. sugar um, things, and it's a moment to moment decision. Yeah. Like yep. I tell you, um, if I'm going to a birthday party, mm-hmm. I'm eating birthday cake. <laughs> you know? right. If I'm going to a wedding, I'm eating wedding cake, you know? <laughs> so, um, it's that's why I don't call it a diet. Yeah. Okay. That didn't feel good to me. Yeah. At, at age fifty, I only want stuff to feel good at this point. Right. Okay. So, but if I know I'm going to that event that morning, mm-hmm. I'm very, very, um, I'm preparing in terms of my breakfast. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, lean um, protein. Um, usually, I'm doing that smoothie with the with the different things that I mentioned. I put in mm-hmm. because I'm going walking or I'm going running or mm-hmm. I'm going to yoga. Mm-hmm. My lunch is going to be the green leafy vegetables with either the, the chicken or fish on top. Mm-hmm. Um, dinner might be like some whole grain um, or I like the zucchini pasta and different types of um, spinaches and um, kale. 
that um, with also a bit more um, of the lean protein and the snacks in between because I do five small meals a day mm -hmm. so that my, um, my blood sugar never drops. Mm -hmm. I don't want my blood sugar mm -hmm. dropping. If my blood sugar drops, then my cortisol stress hormone goes up. Mm -hmm. And really, we only want the cortisol to peak in the, earth, in the morning after you wake. Mm -hmm. So you only, because that's what gets all of the organ systems revved up to peak, mm -hmm. to work and, and perform for me during mm -hmm. the day. If I get up though, and I miss breakfast mm -hmm. and my blood sugar drops, mm -hmm. then what happens is my cortisol is going to peak over the course of the day. Mm -hmm. And if my cortisol is high, that's my stress hormone, mm -hmm. then I'm not going to process well. Mm -hmm. My metabolism is going to be super slow. Mm -hmm. my, I'm going to be irritable and annoyed mm -hmm. at things. I'm going to be stressed out. That's why people are having panic attacks through the day. or And then it starts to come out at night as well. Mm -hmm. And then I'm putting, um, guess what, more of that visceral fat. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that breakfast, key. The lunch, the dinner, as I described, and then in between the snacks, I don't usually count calories. I, I you know, look at the um, at other factors in terms of the food combinations, but for those okay. snacks in between, I will. I'll do like 100 to 150 kcals of boiled egg um, and or one and a half. If, I, if my vitamin D levels are low because I'm not out in the sun, then I'll, okay. I'll make sure I eat the yolk as well. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I will only do the yolk for one. Mm -hmm. I might do some apple slices with hummus um, for that those snacks in between mm -hmm. um, but what i what i don't want are dressings yeah. and stuff that my food that my body doesn't recognize yeah. Yeah. Uh, so i might do my own dressing i'll um, do um, two tablespoons of olive oil and then um, squeeze lime juice and mm -hmm. cracked pepper Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of Himalayan um, salt, mm -hmm. whisk it together and put that and use that either veggies or on my salad. Mm -hmm. But my fruit and the glycemic index, I want low glycemic index in the morning because mm -hmm. I don't want anything that's raising my blood sugar up this way. So we just talked about, I don't want my blood sugar going down that way because mm -hmm. my stress hormone, but I also don't want my blood sugar going up uh, like that yeah. Yeah. early early, early morning. Mm -hmm. So I do blueberries in the morning. Um, I'll do apples. I'll do pears, um, sometimes strawberries. I have a little bit higher glycemic index than the blue, than the blueberries and the, the apples and pears. I would not do watermelon or cantaloupe or honeydew in the morning because I am setting myself up for weight issues mm -hmm. when I do that. So I might do those a little bit later. And if I am I'm within 15 minutes before or 15 minutes after I'm doing some lean protein so that I'm balancing mm -hmm. so that protein so the protein balances that sugar so it doesn't yeah. go up so high yeah. and then I don't have pancreas overworking and trying to um, come back after and, and and manage that with my insulin mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if I'm doing um if I do like the birthday if I go to a birthday cake right you know uh -huh. But do that. I'm looking for lean protein, you know, at the party. I'm looking, do you have baked chicken? You have baked yeah. fish, yeah. broiled anything, um, mm -hmm. any beans, mm -hmm. you know, that. And I usually have protein, um, my own protein shakes and powders and stuff in my yeah. car too. Mm -hmm. Because I've, yeah, because I, well, I used to before this would drive from office to office mm -hmm. and it, it, it's hard to manage if you if you do not prepare ahead of time because yes. the food the the food that's out there that you can get quickly it's not it's not healthy it's processed it's high fat high set or high sodium yep. which also as you get older your body doesn't manage that doesn't need that much sodium so it's not going to manage that so well and that's why we get the the swelling in the knees and the mm -hmm. and the ankles and the other other parts. Uh, mm -hmm. So with, you know, before we were talking about, you know, how to fuel your body, we were talking about diet. So one really popular diet is intermittent fasting. Tons mm -hmm. of people are doing intermittent fasting. I, I tried to do kind of like my own clinical trial, because when you talk about 
that individual fingerprint of what you actually need. Not everybody should be doing intermittent fasting, but a lot of people are. So what is, you know, coming from a medical doctor to a holistic nutritionist to a psychiatrist and putting all those things together, what is your opinion about uh, intermittent fasting? And I I just don't think it's, I don't think it's the healthiest option. Just mm -hmm. like, I don't think keto, you know, oh, is I the, hate it. Keto acidosis. Yeah. Right. Keto um, diet. Mm -hmm. The problem is the brain needs to be fed consistently. Yep. Yep. And the, the rest of the organs in the body can, will break down stored fat, will break down even muscle to <laughs> amino acids and yep. then convert that and use that as fuel and energy. Yep. Um, but the brain is not, the brain needs glucose and it needs the, the glucose from the last meal you had. Mm -hmm. So when you don't, if you go past three hours without eating, mm -hmm. blood sugar drops, cortisol goes up and the brain, you, that's why you get the foggy, can't calculate, a little bit more irritable, mm -hmm. the headaches, all of that, because your brain is telling. So if you listen to your body, if you feel your body, it will tell you, oh, that I need to eat. It will tell you when it's like, oh, I need water. It will also tell you when it needs some more fat, yeah. you know, like yeah. good fats, like coconut oil or avocado yeah. or, or olive oil. Usually, if, if, if you pay attention, but there are certain times when um, people do have to lose a significant amount of weight mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you're at a, in a health zone here, Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You might have to do some things to get yourself out of that, out of that risky stroke zone, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So you want to prevent going to that place. Anyway, it's like someone who comes into the office um, and they want to, they're coming to see me as a holistic psychiatrist and they want to use some, um, some herbs or teas or different things. Mm -hmm. Well, if it has gone to this point here where you're suicidal or you can't yeah. function, yeah. to bring you out of that danger zone same thing if your blood you come in your blood pressure is this high we're going to have to do something to bring you to a safer zone mm -hmm. so in the same way if your if your weight is excessive and now you're in this risky zone for diabetes or you're already um the numbers are your um, hemoglobin A1C is already there. Mm -hmm. Your BMI is already there. Yeah. Your waist circumference is already there. Yeah. Then um, two weeks of intermittent fasting, two weeks of keto, two weeks of the South Beach diet. Not two long weeks term. Yeah. Not long term. Yeah. But I two agree. weeks, do this, do this, yep. do this, hydrate well, yep. put everything in place, yep. you know, um, in order to be able to support it, but no longer than that. Yes. Otherwise, it, it is not healthy. And, and your body wants everything to be in balance, yep. right? Yep. Everything, hormones in balance, mm -hmm. chemi chemicals in balance, your water in balance, your sodium in balance. When anything is off, mm -hmm. that's when the issues come. Yes. So speaking of hydration, but Terrence had a question. That was Kiki's question. Uh, hopefully I asked her right. She said, what if you practice intermittent fasting, but you don't eat five meals, but you do two meals and two to three snacks, uh, was her question exactly. Uh, okay. And, and I wanted to speak to, so you can answer that question, but I wanted to speak to hydration. Like there are certain things that you could tell physically, like in your urine, if your pee is right. super, super <laughs> dark, right. you're not drinking enough water. If it smells, it yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. That's a good one too. Uh, pinching your skin. So what is that test, Dr. Uh, doctor? So it's the skin turner. So mm -hmm. if you pinch your skin and it stays up, mm -hmm. then you are dehydrated. Okay, that's good. That's a good one. For me, so, it's my lips sometimes too, but I like that one. So if you pinch your skin and mm -hmm. it stays up, okay. Yep. Dry mouth, mm -hmm. um, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the urine, you can look at you can look at your urine and your poop and, and get a whole lot of information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so your urine color tells you if you're hydrating well or not. Mm -hmm. If your poop is floating or, or, or not, that tells you also. If your poop floating, floats, floating in the, poop, floats in the water. A lot of fat in it. 
Go I mean, back to is, there's a lot of fat and a lot of stuff that's not being digested okay. that's coming to, um, in your poop. And what about the color of your poop? Uh, that varies. Okay. That varies. <laughs> yeah, but, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So it, 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 well, sometimes people will, will take certain types of supplements. Yeah. Like they'll do iron. Yeah. And they're like, well, you know, I don't feel improved energy and my poop is so black. I'm yeah. like, oh, you remember to put it with vitamin C because vitamin mm -hmm. C helps you to absorb it better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh no. So some things need a carrier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we, when people do no fat diets, you have issues because you need fat to be yep. able to carry certain hormones and chemicals through the gut, through the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is Terrence's question. He said, what's a natural way to lower your cortisol levels without supplements? Um, so adaptogens, um, anything, well, first, um, decreasing coffee. So decrease mm -hmm. coffee. If you're drinking more than two cups of coffee a day, mm -hmm. you can really help your adrenals by decreasing that to two cups. Try to, and if you have high cortisol and anxiety, really decreasing, 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 and removing mm -hmm. coffee and using green tea as as an alternative. Mm -hmm. um, adaptogens, I'm also helpful for adrenals. Mm -hmm. um, a lot, a lot, a lot of fluids. Mm -hmm. um, B, the B vitamins, the B complex vitamins are gonna be like the best, really. Um, and I wouldn't do a mega dose or a high potency um, B vitamin, unless you know your B12 numbers are normal or low. Mm -hmm. But for some people um, who take too much B12, it makes them jittery mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. can increase anxiety. And then you mm -hmm. sort of get the, the rebound mm -hmm. from that. Mm -hmm. So B vitamins, your grains, your green leafy vegetables, mm -hmm. um, the adaptogens, um, lots and lots and lots of water. Um, Making sure you eat breakfast or something in the morning and protein in that breakfast is probably going to be really, it's going to be key. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the adrenal, the adrenals, that's your fight or flight. Yeah. Okay. So if someone is, if you have relationship issues, you know, with your spouse, with um, someone you work with, your employer. Mm -hmm. When you're in their space and, and there's drama or you're getting stressed by that, your body feels that stress in the same way as if a 18 wheeler is, a, is coming at you 65 miles per hour. It doesn't know the difference. Mm -hmm. So managing that stress, that fight or flight reflex is huge with the adrenals mm -hmm. so if your adrenals are excreting cortisol it's usually because that fight or flight was was triggered mm -hmm. so we know our other senses you know our sight our hearing our taste the fight or flight sense is that that you can't feel but it's there and you know it serves a purpose but we don't usually have an 18 wheeler you know, barreling down on us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when that fight or flight is triggered, your heart rate and blood pressure go up to send blood to your arms and legs to be in muscles to be able to fight or flight, run. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it is not sending it to the brain though to think and process. Okay. We need the, the muscles, we need the extremities to, to be stronger. So not up here. So when that's why when we're in a stressed out space, you can't problem solve or think rationally or make even make the best judgments. Okay. So that fight or flight gets triggered. The blood goes to the arms and legs, right? The way to reverse that breath work, your breathing does the opposite. So the breathing that I'm doing now that we're all doing, this is the maintain life and organs breathing okay but when you do deep inhaling such that you and not in slow 
So it's a type deep breathing is super slow. Mm -hmm. And it is what reverses the fight or flight. It's what says everything is okay. So if this is the trigger, deep breathing does this mm -hmm. and this. It's okay. It's soothing that. It's okay. There's no danger. There's no 18 wheeler. <laughs> There's no dinosaur. There's no person here trying to hurt me. Boom, boom, boom. So usually when I teach breathing, I tell people to either sit, stand, or lie down, but make sure nothing is crossed. So you don't cross your arms, you don't cross legs, you make sure your spine is straight, right. but yet you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then you inhale deeply and slowly to a count of four. And as you're inhaling, your chest expands. If you put your hand on your belly while you're inhaling, your hand should go out. Why? Because the type of deep breathing needed to, to reverse that, that fight or flight reflex is when the chest expands, which pushes down on the diaphragm, and the belly right here goes out. So if you put your hand on your belly, like right now, your belly is not doing anything because this is that's I'm not doing deep breathing. Mm -hmm. But if I stop and inhale deeply counting one, two thousand to four. I can feel my hand go out. And then when I exhale, my hand should go back in. So I usually inhale to four through my nose and exhale through my mouth. Now for some people, the mind is really still too busy yeah. because that's anxiety, the ruminations. It's so we, and it's not wacky stuff. Like anxiety is just normal. Everybody's born with it. So too much of it though is when you're ruminating and thinking about the bills or the kids or the spouse or the this or the, the or the to-do list or I'm supposed to be here next and then here and here, here, here. All of that. That right there, body senses that as danger. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the heart rate is up, blood pressure is up. That's why some people who say, I'm not really stressed, but their heart rate is up, their blood pressure is up. And they begin to have issues with their with their um, with other um, organ systems because that's that heightened system. So for them to be able to quiet some of that noise, um, meditation is one thing. Um, another is if particularly if they can't get into a meditative state where you quiet the mind and can mm -hmm. just imagine all the thoughts going into a cloud. Mm -hmm. or into you know whatever you want to put in, a bubble or whatever mm -hmm. then focusing on the breath work mm -hmm. you know setting your timer for five minutes or ten minutes and then just practicing inhaling to four holding it for two and then exhaling on five so then you're focused on the four the two the five, the four, the two, the five mm -hmm. and then all of the other anxiety all of that other stuff gets put to the side, heart rate goes down, blood pressure goes down, fight or flight turned off. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the best thing is to prevent it from getting there. But mm -hmm. after that, the breath work is, it just works. It's normal physiology. So there's no hocus pocus, there's no magic. It's just, that's the way the body is designed. That's good. So, Dr. Andrea, I know we, we've almost been at an hour, but I wanted to kind of go over, because of the times that we're living in, uh, you know, people have different opinions about what's happening, what's not happening, uh, but in terms of really taking care of yourself and do-it-yourself health, there are some things that you could do to maintain your immune system. Uh, yeah. And so can you speak to some of those things? Because I made a list of like 17 things. Uh, you mentioned vitamin C, uh, vitamin D uh, for, you know, you could, you could do that with, you know, getting in the sun. E, you said vitamin E. I have mm -hmm. elderberry. Elderberry, mm-hmm. Uh, medicinal mushrooms like uh, mataki and shiitake and reishi, turkey tail, uh, astragalus, selenium, garlic, mm -hmm uh andrographics i don't know what that is but i just researched that uh, yeah i don't do those <laughs> okay licorice and then um what about licorice and you talked I about could, that. 
black the licorice. complex. Yeah, black licorice. Um, licorice is not the licorice that's in the candy, by the way. Yeah, not that one. <laughs> uh, and the B we complex. Talk about the different teas, remember? Yeah. Okay. So there's certain teas that you can put together. Mm -hmm. or soups that you can put together that can help with immune system mm -hmm. and don't forget the probiotics, probiotics. So the probiotics. okay that's probiotics good. at least 10 billion lactobacillus okay mm -hmm. because the, the probiotics can help with the the yeast mm -hmm. it helps you know the, the mycotoxins and mm -hmm. food a lot of the um that food stuff that mm -hmm. the, excuse me the non-food stuff yeah. that we talked about earlier yeah. the probiotics um the um, amylase lipase bromelain mm -hmm. um the green tea extract those are key things there but there are different teas and soups and combinations bone so broth? If, pardon bone broth yes mm -hmm. yes absolutely mm -hmm. and then for like the chinese will divide certain viruses into like cold like wind cold type and wind warm type so the cold type those are the regular colds mm -hmm. so cilantro and basil and parsnip and ginger mm -hmm. you know those types of combinations mm -hmm. but covid is falls more so in the wind warm type mm -hmm. so it's going to be more um definitely cilantro but some of the onions and and mint mm -hmm. so if you can do more of your cilantro and your mint teas mm -hmm. um, during this period of time a lot more water a mm -hmm. lot more water the meditation mm -hmm. to you know soothe that fight or flight i'm mm -hmm. um, very important and then just other things managing the stress yeah you know one thing i was looking into and i can't find anything definitive is um, should I remove my apple cider vinegar Ooh. during this period of time? Okay. Because apple cider vinegar, we know, um, absolutely helps with um, your blood sugar, your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And I used to like to um, do, if I didn't do my warm, um, my, my warm water and lemon in the morning mm -hmm. detox, mm -hmm. then I would you know, sometimes do my apple cider vinegar and my, my water in the morning. In the mornings. But mm. um, according to Chinese medicine and many Chinese um, doctors, vinegar actually traps virus. Oh. So you want to release virus and by yeah. fight off. You, you know, it's usually if you have a cold or flu, you avoid vinegar. Yeah. You also avoid, you avoid the heavy volume meats. Mm -hmm. You avoid shellfish mm -hmm. during those periods of time. Okay. Right. But the vi so those things make sense mm -hmm. with COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, not to do so much meat, but to get, but to definitely get my protein in, in my, you know, like five meals a day. Or if you're doing the intermittent, like the young lady I mentioned, and she's doing this, this with the two snacks. Mm -hmm. Make sure those, you know, those snacks. You have some walnuts and some blueberries in there, and. Mm -hmm and some flaxseed and chia mixed in with something, <laughs> mm -hmm. okay? Um, the almond butters, those types of things, mix in the chia and the flax mm -hmm. into that so that you get as much bang for the buck um, from those. So you said you're you're contemplating not doing apple cider vinegar because that, that really just blew me away because I'm like, apple cider vinegar! No. Apple okay. cider. Uh -huh. It's eight o'clock. Like I said, I'm not... I'm not saying absolutely. I'm looking for the data on that. But okay. I don't know all. I'm constantly learning and yeah. I'm, you know, so I learn different things from this shaman, from this yeah. coastal person, the Chinese medicine, the Alabama lady, you know, from everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so it's just my me remembering, like, hold it. I don't do vinegar when mm -hmm. I have a cold. I don't do vinegar when I feel like I have the flu. Mm -hmm. So during this period of time, hmm. But I always come back to my mindset, which is, okay. I'm, I'm safe and covered and protected. Yeah. And my cells are programmed to defend and care for me. Yeah. So if you had to give like a list of um, vitamins and or trace minerals and or supplements that our bodies need you know whatever age we're at uh what's like your top 10 things 
that you would say you must have? Okay, so right now with COVID and everyone indoors, vitamin D, mm -hmm. before when people were out and about more, um, our bodies, you know, make vitamin D, mm -hmm. converts cholesterol from the skin mm -hmm. um, to, to vitamin D, but most people are indoors now. So most people do need a vitamin D supplement and vitamin D doesn't, is not in like food, you know, um, dairy is fortified with vitamin D. Um, mm -hmm. Salmon may have a little bit, but mm, not a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, so I would suggest a vitamin D supplement for okay. immune um, function as well as bone, muscle, um, menopause, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, et cetera. Uh, magnesium at night to help with relaxation and sleep and magnesium deficiencies are much um, higher than people think right now. Mm -hmm. uh, magnesium deficiencies can impact your mood, where your body handles neurotransmitters, mm -hmm. which is basically your, your normal chemicals in your body. Mm -hmm. um, calcium, mm -hmm. um, your body, but don't try to do all your calcium in one because your body can't absorb all that calcium. So you have to you have to break your, you know, do a little bit of calcium in the mornings and then some over the day. Be careful though with things like Tums for your calcium because mm -hmm. antacids impact your, your gut's ability to absorb nutrients and mm -hmm. minerals. So you take, you might take all of these things, right? You know, all of the normal and healthy nutrients and supplements, but then your, your gut can't absorb it because right. either you took an antacid, which impacts the lining or you, you're also doing fat-free stuff, like the fat-free yeah, foods yeah. Yeah. that have a alestra in it. That yeah. alestra coats the gut yeah. and prevents you from being able to absorb the fat-soluble vitamins, which yeah. are vitamin E, E, and K. Yeah. So you don't want to do any fat-free foods that yeah. have alestra yeah. in them. Well, the omega-3s, huge. Mm -hmm. So omega Three is more important than omega-6, yeah. and of the omega-3s, the EPA, a cosopentanoic acid, is better than the DH, DHA. Okay. So you look for the ratios, and as long as EPA is greater than DHA, great. If you're doing a 369, make sure there's more of the three than the six, and you know, definitely more than the, than the nine. Okay. So omega-3s will be in, it, I recommend those if you're not eating fish mm -hmm. at least three times a week okay. and the fish uh, fish would be great because the omega-3 in and is so bioavailable your body just absorbs mm -hmm. it greatly so mm -hmm. salmon mackerel mm -hmm. trout sardines um, tuna krill herring mm -hmm. all high in omega-3 and then the way that your body will will be able to absorb it. Mm -hmm. And omega-3s are important for your cells, yep. but not just the cell membrane, yeah. which is a huge deal, mm -hmm. right? How because you want things to be able to things you want to be able to get into the cell yes. and the things we don't want to not be able to get into the cell. Yeah. So that's why omega-3s are so so important. Mm -hmm. But it's also the receptors on the cell. Mm -hmm. So the receptor needs to be able to receive the tryptophan or the tyrosine yeah right mm -hmm. so, tryptophan is needed for serotonin and mood mm -hmm. tyrosine is amino acid needed for um for, for um, frontal lobe functioning mm -hmm. and energy your dopamine okay mm -hmm. so if you don't have enough omega-3s mm -hmm. the cell membrane is, is fragmented and the receptor is not going to be able to receive those so you see it's the combination of things mm -hmm. so your omega-3s super important for mm -hmm. mood um, mm -hmm. also joints mm -hmm. so not just the cell and the receptor but joints mm -hmm. um, and tissues mm -hmm. Um, inflammation. So sometimes I'll say people, you know, I'll recommend if they have inflammation in their knees and arms and, and, and shoulders to do not just do your turmeric teas, mm -hmm. but to definitely increase your, uh, your omega threes mm -hmm. for people who are having some focusing difficulty, omega threes, mood and anxiety issues, omega threes, B vitamins, magnesium, um, 
um, anxiety, absolutely. The B, the B complex and B vitamins. Mm -hmm. um, if you have um, too much anxiety, though, um, you have to be careful again with the B complex that you don't take too much of the B12. Mm -hmm. If you have a B12 deficiency, then you're going to have um, tingly um, hands, neuropathies, low energy, low mm -hmm. sex drive those types of things. And that's going to probably have to be replaced first with a sublingual B12 mm -hmm. um, to get directly into the system. And then uh, you can uh, advance to the, the B12 tablets. So I would say the most important, just to recap, the omega-3s, B-complex, magnesium, vitamin D. Mm -hmm. uh, vitamin C is in a lot of things. Most people are not deficient in vitamin C, but it is definitely important during this period of time. Yeah. Um, what about uh, curcumin? I think that's the compound mm -hmm. that's found mm -hmm. in uh, turmeric. Would you suggest mm -hmm. that one as yep. well? Mm -hmm. Yep. So some people a little bit more active. Mm -hmm. um, if you, like someone who works out like you, Madison, you know, you probably already do like some green tea extract or you already do some mct oil in your um, smoothies which help with like the lactate buildup um, mm -hmm. or help with the way that your body metabolizes things um, for some people who are athletes or working out a bit more who might do some of the amino acids they might do um, a tyrosine or tryptophan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sometimes when people are um, if you are during this period of time a bit more anxious, mm -hmm. you know, a bit mm -hmm. sad, mm -hmm. um, if you have a history of depression and going into depre you know, depressed episodes, mm -hmm. um, but you're not in the depressive episode now where you need to go and see a doc, but you're concerned about how, how you're managing it, 5-HTP. Um, um, so it's a tryptophan. Um, there are a number of companies that um, have it, the, the tryptophan in combination with L-theanine and like lemon balm extract, dandelion. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are others, um, if you're having difficulty sleeping because of the what's going on now, uh, mm -hmm. melatonin. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I wouldn't, if you're anxious or sad, I wouldn't go over five milligrams of yeah. melatonin because over five milligrams is associated with the risk of increased depression. Mm -hmm. Five milligrams lower mm -hmm. can work effectively. Uh, melatonin in combination with magnesium mm -hmm. at night can definitely help calm and help you go into the first stage of sleep, second mm -hmm. stage, third, deep sleep, and then go through that cycle again, which gives you the most restorative sleep yeah. and or um, um, function, you know, a, a good set for a function for the next day. Okay. I'm thinking. That's good. I made a list, so I'm, I'm writing them all down. So, yeah. Um, and in terms of like essential oils, because I know there is like a lot of popular kinds of, you know, things that have gone into the, the mainstream, you know, in terms of like right, right. businesses. What what is your opinion on essential oils? I use them. I like them. I like them. Yeah. Um, the essential oils are in, in some cases, you know, some companies 30, 40 times stronger, some companies mm -hmm. 70 times stronger. Yeah. So the key is knowing, you know, which ones you have to dilute. Like yeah. in most cases, you only need a couple of drops and yeah you know, eight ounces of distilled water. Yeah. The other, and some of them you need a carrier, like a, co like a coconut oil, like again, mm -hmm. bats, mm -hmm. you know, to, to carry it through. Mm -hmm. um, I like, you know, during this period of time, because, you know, I live in Santa Monica, so my sinuses and the pressure here, the air pressure is such, I like to use um, peppermint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I will do um, a peppermint pen and I'll do a halo. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a company, they have a peppermint that is so strong that I, I dilute it in water wow. and I'll put a few drops mm -hmm. on the back of my neck mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So I like 
peppermint for that lavender actually lavender yep i use that for bed lavender helps with digestion as well lavender helps with my seasonal allergies mm -hmm. um, the peppermint can can help with that also mm -hmm. um lemon i use for so many things yeah and, i love lemon yeah, yeah just for as a natural detox yep, yep. Um, mm -hmm. the orange the different orange spice actually um will, will work here on the frontal lobe mm -hmm. okay in terms of focus mm -hmm being um, a little bit more alert and, mm -hmm. and active and clear and present mm -hmm. and the different orange spices mm -hmm. um for gut you know sometimes but i like to use i, I really like my ginger teas for my gut yeah. you know but there's some um that you some um, digestive mm -hmm. um, essential oils that you can put right on your belly yeah I don't find that as effective for me. Many people say it works for them, but I really like the inside out. I like the, um, <laughs> I like my um, ginger um, combinations that I use with my teas and I just make it a little mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. So thank you so much, Dr. Andrea Sebes. It has been, uh, so she's not accepting new patients because I definitely was like, hey, I want you to be my doctor, but she is a, a mom of two and she's focusing on her, her mommy duty. So uh, this has been priceless uh, for me. I hope everybody else watching got a lot out of it. I know we couldn't ask all the questions. I know there's some other questions in the chat, um, but thank you so much. Uh, and I know it went very fast. If you, I know. If you send me the questions, I'll answer them. And yeah, send okay. I will okay. do that if anybody has any other questions. But I think, you know, in general, the thing that I love to say is really you have to take your health into your own hands. And starting with your food, really being your medicine, organic food, and not just, oh, I want to lose weight or I want to do this or, you know, for vanity purposes. Like now we're living in times where you really have to take your health into your own hands. So if this COVID hasn't taught you anything, like, it is literally taking your health into your own your own hands so that you know making food organic food first you know uh, whole foods plants nuts legumes and then i'm not opposed to eating meat like i don't like sardines but i'm literally looking at my food as my medicine and i know that it's great and <laughs> great for you my mom likes them but i'm like oh they're so disgusting but I eat avocados, I eat mushrooms, I eat a lot of things I don't like, but I know they're good for me. So that is what I want to leave you guys with. Uh, Miss, uh, Dr. Uh, Best, do you have any final thoughts, comments? And thank you for coming to class, y'all. She's coming to class because of Cheryl, my sister Cheryl. So thank you for joining us for class. But do you have any final thoughts or anything that you want to leave us with? Um, no, just, you know, don't beat up on yourself. Mm -hmm. and um and use the right language you know that that helps you to see it as you're just doing this for yourself yeah okay yeah so don't use words like diet and, yeah. and other words that don't feel good yeah. because again you're you're thinking around it yep. it's huge 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 yeah. and if you plateau that means you're and you're not getting the gains you were getting. That means your body is saying, "Step it up, next level." Mm -hmm. So my girlfriend and cousin Cheryl, unshakable woman, you know, she knew. Okay, I needed to take it to the next level, which is why I'm in your class. So I'm appreciative of that. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, so you all, uh, my friend Cheryl has a wonderful podcast uh, uh, called Unshakable Woman. So I'm going to put that in the the chat, the private Facebook group too. If you haven't gone to the private Facebook group, then definitely send me an email. I know Chris is in it, Monica, Andre. I'm not sure if you're in it or not. Kanitra, I'll have to give it to you. Terrence, you're not in it either, but it's okay. Cheryl's in it uh miss sharon i think you just got in it so yes thank y'all uh for that because i'm going to be putting some information uh about dr andre we may not be able to be a patient but you know thank you this has been priceless for me uh yeah. in terms of just learning things and i really wanted to inspire people to not just like try to get the outside but start from the inside first you know and, and healing your body that way and then 
I just believe that supplements should be supplemental to what you're already eating, right? And what you're already mm -hmm. thinking and where you're taking your body and your mind and your spirit and the people that you surround yourself with. That's what I believe. Uh, and it sounds like Dr. Best believes the same thing. That's why she's in this class. And that's why I met her through my sister, Cheryl. So uh, thank you guys. And the other thing that I wanted to talk about too, uh, we'll talk about this off the air. Um, Dr. Best, because I believe one thing that you could do in terms of doing it for yourself, do it yourself health, is really educating yourself. And one thing that I'm a huge believer in, in watching food documentaries and like really trying to get an understanding for what is happening with your food, what's happening with your medicine, what's happening just in general. So uh, we're going to talk about that the next time, Dr. Andrea. It'll be good about some documentaries that I think are a must watch. I put that at the list last uh, because I wanted to talk about that and I put a link in the private Facebook page, but I think that's super important. So thank y'all for joining me on your Sunday. And uh, thank you so much, Dr. Andrea C. Carter Best. If you're on Instagram you're so and you wanna follow her, she's uh, Dr. Best Integrative. I put it in that flyer. And then her website is I, then M, then spell out doctor, and then best. Because she's the best, y'all. So thank you so much. It's been so Thanks for having me. Say, say it again, Dr. Andrea. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, you Dr. Carter. Yeah, so I'm going to mute uh, everybody if you want to say anything. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. All the information. Thank you so much. Great information, great stuff. Yes. So, yes, yes. I just love her calm spirit. She has a very calm Beautiful, yeah. right? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, she's very zen. Right. Very calm. Some yes, she is. 14 year old and 18 year old are out there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let her fool you because she has a calm spirit with them too. <laughs> Aww, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Uh, this has been priceless, yeah. and uh, we appreciate your time and the information, and getting just a slice of a little bit of all the things that you've, you know, spent years to. You've been in the business like more than twenty-five years, right? Yeah, this is yeah. my twenty-fifth year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, great. So we, we're getting like the concentrated version of all of her Eastern, Western. Holistic nutrition and, and all of those good things. So uh, I can't say thank you enough. Uh, You're welcome. I know we went fast again. Please send me the questions yes. so that I can make sure that you have the information. That's the important thing that you have the information and then you share it. Mm -hmm. Okay, share, 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 share. Yes, please. Thank okay. you so much. Thank, thank you. you. I'll see you tomorrow in class at nine o'clock Pacific Standard Time, eleven o'clock. Central and then 12 o'clock Eastern.